What is up, my beautiful people, and welcome to the Between Two Sheets podcast, where we interview interesting people and sailors and mariners from around the world. In this episode, we've got Colin from Parlay Revival revealing all and telling his entire story start to finish, which I don't think anybody's been able to capture from Colin in one place until now. So if you're interested in his story and you're interested in this channel and you're interested in just learning a little bit about what it takes to buy a hurricane damaged boat, refit the boat, cruise the boat, break the boat, and then fix the boat again, you're in for a treat on this one. Now before this gets started, I just have to apologize for a little bit of noise. I've got a lot of work going on on my boat and I'm parked right on the front of the dock in the marina. So you can hear people coming on their dinghies, you can hear the dock lines creaking, you can hear the people working on the teak on the top of my boat, and you can hear the people working on the arch when they were building the radio arch for my boat. It's not throughout the entire video, and when it happens, just realize I don't have a studio set up with sound isolation. If you like these podcasts, you can search Between Two Sheets on any of the major podcast players, and it should come up. If it doesn't, my SEO guy is not doing his job correctly. Hope you guys like. Much love. Okay, cool. We're good. We're running. Serious little operation you're running here. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming by, man. No worries. Really appreciate it. So, everybody, if you don't know, which I'm sure most of you do, this is Colin from uh, the YouTube channel Parlay Revival, and he's going to be joining me just for a little conversation. I've never actually got your whole story, so I wanted to sit you down and, and really see, like, behind the scenes of your life and see, you know, like, how how this all played out for you. Yeah, not many people have, to be honest. You know, we do the weekly videos and you, you just do your vlogging thing, uh -huh. but only our Patreons have, have really gotten the uh, inside scoop. But um, I guess it all started with a hurricane damaged boat. Yeah. I was um, working on a super yacht. I worked on super yachts for like 12 years as a chief engineer. Yeah. And then um, I had a really bad captain. And I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm working for these billionaires, and it's, there's this hierarchy thing that happens on super yachts where the captain's just like the god of the boat, and every it just filters down. And uh, if you get a bad captain, it's gonna suck. So I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to do something for myself. Yeah. And then um, I, I formed a friendship with a uh, an ex Navy SEAL. Oh, cool. And we um, decided to go into business and start a surf charter company. And we needed a boat. Really? That's yeah. what the original plan was, yeah. huh? So we went to, um, I went to Costa Rica, that's where he lives. And we, um, we we needed a boat, so we just started looking online. And then Hurricane Irma hit. And um, someone told me about all these boats for sale in Tortola. So I flew there. Where, where is Tortola? In the BBIs. Okay. And I flew there, and it was devastating oh yeah i bet you saw it was, like, was it right after the hurricane that you went the hurricane was in september and i was there in december wow but there was no accommodation i i had to like sleep on this guy's boat <laughs> um it was it was it was so it was an eye-opening experience um but there were just boats wrecked everywhere oh, that's crazy. and um i just started looking the hardest part was trying to find who owned these boats yeah and you could you knew that they were they were destined for the scrapyard they were they were totaled but um for someone like myself it was an intriguing situation okay so how, how exactly did you figure out what who owned the boats that's very interesting yeah yeah it was super hard you'd see a boat look like a good project salvageable um maybe it was already back at the dock and floating some of them were still completely underwater it was oh, that had to be... it was crazy like most of the rigs were gone so most boats had no set, uh, no masts. Um, I think there was like six billion dollars worth of damage or something. Wow. Just in the whole area, but um, yeah, totally devastating. Um, but yeah, I saw an opportunity. Yeah. And and uh, long story short, I hopped on a Lagoon 450, and it was messed up. Are we allowed to swear this, on this? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. Swear are we swearing it. on this? Yeah, yeah. I'll oh, yeah. just bleep it out. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it was it was fucked up. <laughs> it was so bad. It had holes in the side of it. One side had sunk. Yeah. So it was all. Is this the one damaged. you bought? Yeah. It, the it first was... one you went on? No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> I've been on like maybe thirty boats. Wow, yeah. that's a lot. So you spent like a couple months down there going through. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And it was um, 
it was tough. So I linked up with a, um, what do you call it, a broker, a, a yacht broker, uh, BVI Yacht Sales, and became friends with Gary, the owner. And he just started pointing me in the right direction, giving me contacts with um, insurance companies, and uh, started weaseling my way into the so wait, wait. salvage industry. When you say you contact insurance companies, were you just cold calling the insurance companies? Like, hey, send me everything you have for sale right now? Or? He, he would put me in touch with people. Okay. Yeah. And then... Um, it wasn't for specific boats. It was like for, okay, this is what we have on our roster that's for sale. That's yeah. Stuff. And you could inquire about certain boats and you could go look at them and... and, and oh, that's cool. And that's how the process kind of worked. But I ended up um, getting in touch with the salvage company there. Okay. Uh, Husky Salvage. And he offered me a job salvaging boats with them. Uh. And so I went out there and then we were salvaging these boats. That was fascinating. Oh, you did it? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, I was doing that part time. That must have been fun or yeah, it was, interesting. It was, it was so interesting, man. These boats were sunken like on the bottom of the fucking seabed. And we put these big lift bags under them and float them evenly so they'd come up. Did any of them like fall over? And... We lost a couple. No yeah. way. Yeah, we'd, we'd float them, pump them out, get them uh, to a point where they were stable. And then we'd have to tow them to a shipyard somewhere. So one person would be on the tow boat, towed boat, and one person would be on the tow boat, and uh, just pumping out water, just just while we're trying to get That's to wild. get to the dock. And uh, we lost one. It was just taking on too much water. We had drilled drilled these big um, like tin sheets over the holes mm -hmm. and just drilled through the. Hole. You just do whatever you can to just make them um, as watertight as possible. And yeah, it started sinking and I was on it and had <laughs> two pumps pumping out like with big four inch pipes coming out of it and uh, it started to go down. And no I was way. I was <laughs> You were I on was, it. <laughs> I was on it, but it was it was scary how fast that thing went down. Like it just started started going down and you just saw the water level come up and next minute I was throwing these pumps into the tow boat to save them and the thing just went down and wow. you know, it was uh we lost that one. How long do you reckon it took? <laughs> to, to, sink, to do what? To sink. Oh, so the water was coming in at an alarming rate, but the pumps were keeping up. Okay. But maybe some of the, um, some of the, um, it just took on too much water. Like some of the temporary repairs failed. Yeah, something. yeah. Or well, maybe there was another hole somewhere that we didn't know about. I don't know. It's, uh, oh, it, man, you're just, you're just so working so quickly. You're just, your instincts are just in full. And do you still have lift bags under them when you're towing them? That one, yeah. Yeah, and it still it still went down. And there was no like getting it back up then. Nah, nah, just the lift bag. It sort of healed over, and then the lift bags kind of pop up, and oh, it was. No. Yeah, it was. It Were was you crazy. freaking out when it was happening? Not really. You you know you just got to do your best, and and it's not really your fault if if you can't do yeah. it as long as you do your best, you know. So, um, yeah, it was super interesting. So we gave, became friends, and he was the one that bought Parlay before me. Oh, he, really? He bought it for nothing. Um, insurance company said, just get rid Take of it. Take it. And it was sunk on one side, so he floated it, took it to the shipyard, and uh, and then he sold it on to me. Okay. Yeah, so I was the second buyer of that boat after the hurricane. And how much did you pay for it? 150 grand. Wow. Yeah. Because the rig was up, so like I said, like most of the boats had no rigs, and it was just sunken. Like how how much water was in it? You can see the the the, the line on the wood still on the boat. Yeah. Um, it was probably like waist high when you're down in the hull. Oh, that sucks. So the engines were under everything. Well, the engine. Um, yeah. So I uh, I bought it. Had to had to. So to buy a new rig at that time was about seventy five thousand oh, dollars. So there were other boats that I could have bought that had no rigs, and you're automatically putting another seventy five grand on top of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, it, there's some work going out going on outside. <laughs> I'm having some guys do some teak work, and they're putting some um, plastic down because it it rains literally every night. And I'm on the dock. If you hear the lines creaking, that's what that is. It's a little bit windy today, and there's some some waves coming in. So. But this yeah, is a good setup. There's going to be a little bit of noise here, yeah. This is a pro setup. Yeah, actually, this one's not even, like, focused on us, man. We should, <laughs> <laughs> we should probably, like, turn it a little bit. There we go. There we go. It's only, only quality here, people. People, people. Yeah. No, oh, no, now it's too much. You got all the gear in the shot. I like the gear in the shot. Yeah. I think it looks cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Joe Rogan style. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, okay, so we're at the point where you've bought the boat, you paid 150 grand for a boat that's half underwater. It wasn't, it wasn't underwater at the time because he had gotten it on the, exactly. on the dock. Did he do any work to the boat at all? Yeah, he patched, patched a hole. There was a hole like this big, and he like put a, what do they call it, a hot patch. So it's like just when you slap a bit of glass on there and get it floating. Okay. So I had to repair that. Um, I did it from the inside and yeah. did it with epoxy from the inside. So I got a solid skin on the inside. Uh -huh. And then I went to the outside and started fixing it from the outside. And then you so, just took away all the all the wood that was bad. Yeah, all the balsa was rotten, and it was. Oh, it was um, yeah, it's, it's amazing how fast that stuff deteriorates. Yeah. So this was this was I bought it in I went there in December. I bought it in like February, and then we were sailing out of there by July. Oh but wow! We, we never That's did. Not bad. That's we, we did it. We half finished it. <laughs> you got it so it would sail. You're like, I want to go. Yeah, we got oh, it nice. strong. We did all the fiberglass repairs, but we did none of the finishing. Okay, so inside it was still kind of messed up. Yeah, and, and the outside. Okay. So we, we glassed the outside. Got it. And then I just, you, you I can't didn't... remember if I just rolled. No, I just got a spatula and I just smeared gel coat over the fiberglass to protect it. Yeah. And then we went sailing and we went to like 20 different countries. <laughs> With did this a, did a year and a half repair on the side? Everywhere we went. Like, so it's a, normally have like a crew of six to eight people. So young, sort of, you know, we're not the, you know, tattoos and stuff. And yeah. we'd turn up to these anchorage, anchorages and people would be like, what the f is this? Like, <laughs> yeah, like who all is this side guy? of the boat would just be yeah. damaged. Did you ever get a chance to like blame it on someone else? Like, what you do to my boat, man? <laughs> <laughs> I fucking wish, man. <laughs> it was it was kind of embarrassing at times, but uh, yeah, we, uh, just, we just rolled with it. Yeah, yeah. And but we didn't do any of the any of the fairing, any of the gel coat. It was I literally just smeared gel coat on it to protect the yeah. fiberglass. Yeah, and then we then that we did like fifteen thousand miles. We went all oh. the way down to Grenada, went to Venezuela. Oh, you down, went to Venezuela? Yeah, on Los Rocas. Yeah, cool. And then um, came down to Colombia, and then went all the way back up to Guatemala, uh -huh. and then that's where we finished the boat. Cool. Uh, so in Rio thought, Dulce? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you got into Rio Dulce, yeah. and, and you, what, spent a few months there finishing it up? Yeah, I did a, um, we were there for seven months, but in that seven months I, did, I went back and did a two month um, super yacht gig as okay. chief engineer just to top up the funds yeah. and then um, and then we set sail so at that point when we left Rio Dulce we thought the boat was perfect ready to go across the Pacific to New Zealand my home yeah. and eventually circumnavigate so we were so excited it was um, it was a really like exciting time for us yeah, basically Okay. Yeah, and that, and then from Rio Dulce, where did you go? Went up to Mexico, stopped everywhere, and then went across to Cayman Islands. Oh, we went to Cayman. I loved Cayman. Man. Amazing, amazing diving. Uh, we got some friends that were there. So a lot of people that end up in Rio Dulce come out either to uh, up to Isla Mujeres or uh -huh. across to Cayman Islands or go to the Bay Islands, like okay. Roatan and that. Yeah. Uh, so we met people all the way, and ended up in Panama. Went through the Panama Canal. We were literally about to set sail across the uh, off across the Pacific, and uh, my shrouds just suddenly went slack. Like they were like this. And you're in you're in the, the Pacific side of Panama yep. at this time. Yeah. You're, you're prepped. You're ready to go. We had six months worth of food for. Six Are you already months. provisioned? We were ready. Wow. And because the coronavirus started. Yeah. So it was COVID. So we're like, let's just go. Let's just go get yeah. lost for six months. Let's get enough food for six of us for six months. And um, yeah, we we, had, we we felt like we had everything we needed, and we wouldn't have to go into port. Wow. We had the, the new water maker. We had we were sorted, and um, literally about to leave, and the, the shrouds were just like this. And so I thought it was a rigging issue. So I dropped the sails, and um, we just started inspecting the. Oh, rig. you were under sail when you realized. What yeah, was going on. yeah, yeah. And was the mast bending everywhere, making noise? And no, no. It was just the leeward shroud was just, just flogging in the wind. Yeah. And um, we put we put the sails down, and both shrouds were loose. And um, it took a long time to figure out that it was inside the boat. Yeah. Did, did the you? Rigging issue. At first, you're thinking, okay, well, it's just loose. It was. Right? It was. It, my rig. it was as though like a, a swage fitting had just pulled all the way did you, almost out. Did you go right up the mast and see? Yeah, that? yeah, several times. I had two riggers coming. There happened to be two riggers in Panama City at the time on their boats. 
they came and then they both said there's nothing wrong with this rig and I couldn't find anything um, but I was like why would it all of a sudden go so slack like something has happened to just make it instantly slack did you try to just tighten it up uh, we, we put a few turns on the turnbuckles um, but then we were really lucky there was a um, naval architect in the anchorage as well so he came on and he was like careful doing that like there's a reason that this has happened yeah, we need to find smart guy. yeah he's a rigger and a naval architect um, he went up the rig a couple of times and he's like I can't find anything wrong, wrong with the rig so you've got to go inside and um, we'd, we'd opened up everything that can be opened up and uh, just the next the next step was to start destroying the boat a little bit to find where this damage was and we popped off the trim with the main bulkhead is with the main uh, with the masters and um, popped that off and the the main bulkhead was just it had an S in it oh. and it was just and that's the bulkhead in the front flat, the, that goes between the the, um, the top, uh, holes yeah right right where the masters okay. like the, the mask compression post comes down and it's that full beam it's it's basically the, the most whole thing beam. was bent yeah the whole thing all along yeah. it no, no, so looking looking side on to yeah, it. So if yeah, your yeah. bulkhead was here looking this way, yeah. it was like that. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like the entire bulkhead was... A... Yeah, and and then on this side... Oh, that so had to be disheartening, man. In the other... Yeah, it was, but it was also relieving to find that in a yeah. weird way. Yeah. And it was also relieving to have, have found it before we set across yeah, the Pacific. Yeah, you got lucky. So uh, I'm a big believer in everything happening for a reason, yeah. and, and you know every cloud has a silver lining, and there was it was a that blessing was, in disguise. That was destiny, my friend. Yeah, yeah. And then like we got struck by lightning, and like, <laughs> oh no, and on that side. Yeah, and then oh, my dog God. died. So, and, oh, like, I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't know that. so many oh, like so bad funny. things happened. It was coronavirus, COVID time. You know, had just started, so oh, that it was a it was a tough couple of months there yeah but but we kept our spirits up yeah it happens man it happens yeah. in life mm. if you don't have the lows you can't have the highs exactly man yeah you won't appreciate them anyway i'm sweaty man i worked my butt off today it's hot yeah it's hot in here now we don't have any any shade because of the or, <laughs> uh, uh, wind and I, we can't turn on the fans because then it'll ah, just be so much fan noise, so. yeah that's why we're profusely sweating <laughs> it is warm <laughs> <laughs> I have two. Sorry. That's good. It's, yeah, good. it's either do it outside with the wind noise or do it in here with the with the uh, the hotness. Um, okay. So now we're at the point where your boat's broken. You know what it is. You're in. You're on the Pacific side of Panama. What prompted you to come here? To, uh, by the way, we're on the west side of Panama. We're on the Caribbean side, at a little tiny port town called uh, Puerto Lindo, and it's. I mean, it's an hour to anything. We can't get chicken here. I mean, like, it's hard to get anything here. There's a guy with the with vegetables that comes uh, every other day or so, but trying to get, you know, it's tough. Parts We're in are the really, middle of really the jungle tough. Here. Yeah. Yeah. So the nearest town, Sabanitas, is uh, an hour away, mm -hmm. and yeah. So anytime anyone goes to, you know, anyone anytime. Anytime anyone goes to the city or Sabanitas, you're like, oh, can you grab me one of these? Yeah. Can you grab some of those? Yeah. Just, it's, it's cool. I want some cookies. <laughs> yeah. It's cool how the sailing community just yeah. helps each other out. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, the two guys in the whole boatyard that have cars are always getting them, you know, lending them out. And it's yeah. really neat. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things about living on boats. Yeah. So someone recommended this place to me while we were over on um, Las Brisas on the, on the Pacific side. It was a smart move because the I've been to that side and everything is expensive. I'm talking at, like it's it's fifty dollars a night, sixty dollars a night on a mooring ball there. Yeah. And if you want to be in the marina, if you want to be on the hard, you want to refit your boat. It's impossible. It was it was two hundred twenty dollars a day for my boat on the hard to be hauled out there. Wow. And here it's eight hundred a month. Yeah, that's insane. So it it and. It, Despite paying the two thousand two hundred dollars to come back through the canal that we'd just gone through, yeah. and taking into account that we're going to go back again, so add four thousand four hundred dollars, it's still I knew it would still be cheaper to come here. Absolutely. And it was it was a, it was a good move in the end. Yeah. Um, How long did you think you were going to be over here? <laughs> <laughs> good question. Huh? We had. Um, 
We had Lagoon Panama come inspect the boat. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, it, let's, let's just say it was uh, not very helpful. Oh, that sucks. And, but he was telling me a bunch of bullshit. And uh, he said, like a few weeks, he'll he'll be able to fix it. And really? Like, this is this is sure? more serious than yeah. anything he, he you've saw the probably bucket? ever seen. Yeah, yeah, I got him on the boat, and he he was he was just a bit of a salesman about it. And he's like, I can take care of this. Da, 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 da. And I was like, this is this is way more work than I think you realize. Yeah. And um, so I just kind of ignored him, and I I knew it would be a few. I, I was thinking a few months. Um, but fast forward, we've been out, out of the water for over a year. But yeah, a lot of things have happened in that time. But um, yeah, so we went back through the canal and I thought it would be a few, a few months work and we started dismantling the cabins, like taking apart all of this wood. And you know, it looks all nice when, you, when it's in. We had to like cut this sort of stuff because oh. there'd be screws behind, oh. behind the panels. Yeah. And so they, they prefabricate the cabins and sit them in. Yeah. So there's no way to dismantle them without like getting some serious gear and cutting that out. Uh, so we were just so. destroying these cabins. And then um, the one that had an S bend in it and, and whatnot, all the tabbing to the hull had, had separated. Uh, so it was a serious undertaking. And, and you... the more we looked into it, the, obviously the more we found. Was it, was it more than just one bulkhead? So the, yeah, it was every, every single bulkhead. Yeah, it just went on and on. What do you was... what do you test that to? Do you think that the boat was like uh, used hard when it was you know pounding up wind for its whole life, or it's um, it's a design flaw. Yeah. Right now they're two hundred Lagoon four fifties with uh, with broken bulkheads or damaged bulkheads, wow. and there are a thousand of them made, and I don't know how many have inspected the bulkhead. Yeah. There's a lot of people not on YouTube. There's a lot of people not on Facebook. Yeah. They have no idea that this and the, is going there's a on. lot of people with them that don't even want to know. I'm sure there's there's They're a like, ton nope, not of not even people. gonna look. There is a ton of people like that. Um, so I started to post these videos about the the bulkhead. I made a series about it, and we it was it was quite demoralizing. Actually, like we had we had this huge backlash from from other owners. Oh saying what are you doing yeah. like you're you're Idiot. dropping the 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 value of all of our boats yeah the resale's gonna go down and i i had to take a good hard look at myself and say what do i want to do here do i want to um just stop making these videos and 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 fix my bowl kit and just go sailing and pretend everything's fine or do i want to make as many lagoon 450 owners as possible aware of this so that they will start checking their bowl kids and then if i i thought if i make enough of a noise about this then maybe lagoon will do something about it yeah because lagoon were not doing anything about it when i contacted them yeah. they were like okay hurricane damage blah 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 which well, is that's fair what i would think actually exactly like, and it was fair man, enough. you bought a hurricane damaged boat it's probably messed up when it like got lifted up by 200 mile on our winds or something 100 percent. but and that's that's now, the, that's when i started to fix my boat and make my series and i was documenting my repair procedure for my hurricane damage boat yeah. but in the process everyone was like it, all the owners were like maybe i'll check my bulkheads and they they you got to take these couple bits of trim off and and take this panel off and then you get an end-on view of the of the bulkhead and pretty quickly there were about 20 25 um owners with broken bulkheads and you're like oh this is not just my boat. exactly yeah. and i was like maybe it's not and then like, the more i dove into my boat i saw these things that were there before the hurricane crazy like things that the charter it was in charter for five years five years but there were things that the charter company had done which are, are a direct result of the bulkhead failing that um i i i discovered after the fact like what can you explain so the the flybridge the the 450 has a flybridge uh -huh. and when the bulkhead breaks or bends a lot of them are just bent um there's a whole lot of pressure downwards on the bridge deck okay and that f like where my thumbs are there's the flybridge and right in on the inside of my thumbs there's two locations that you get big cracks happening in there okay and i had these um custom made stainless steel plates screwed over that so oh. when I took the plates off, there were the big cracks, and I was like, why are the cracks there? Oh, that's because the bulkhead broke. 
And I was like, hang on a minute. I, I didn't put those plates in. Yeah. At the same time, like when the, how was I? I was like this. When the boat bends like that, um, the bridge deck separates from the cockpit floor. Yeah. And someone had put these um, wooden battens, like just stuck them in on top of the bridge deck, but below the floor to stop the floor from bouncing. Oh yeah, it was probably making a lot of noise. Yeah, so it, it, it made it more solid, but that can only happen when your bulkheads fail and the boat bends. Yeah, yeah, and you didn't do so, that. So now you realize that this was happening before. Yeah, and so oh. a lot of this stuff, and so Dave She, my neighbor, uh -huh. Lagoon 450, never run aground, never been in a hurricane, broken bulkheads. Um, so I think not much of my damage can be, um, is, is, is a consequence of the hurricane. The turnable to the hurricane. It's a, it's a, it's a design issue. And, and, and I've, and I've gone, I've been to the Lagoon factory. Like I've, I've been, I've, I'm talking with them. I'm trying to help them resolve this to save face for them. You know, like yeah. it's, it's, it's a really, it's a, it's a pretty serious situation for them. And I, and, and yeah, I what love do you do? the boat. What do you do if you're that company? I mean, they're, yeah. they're, you're talking about, how old is your boat? 2012. So that's nine years. I mean, yeah. that's way out of warranty, man. Oh yeah, for it's... sure. And I haven't received a penny from Lagoon. Like okay. uh, there's been zero compensation, um, but because I'm hurricane damaged, but other people have received um, a repair kit or, or some compensation of some that's sort. That's what I heard. They're doing, they're sending out um, like, like a steel U plate that you can bolt in and, exactly. and it'll reinforce that yeah. bulkhead. So yeah. what did you do? Not, let's get off the topic of what the Lagoon did for you, but what did you actually do? Like, what was your, um, hold on a second. <laughs> hey, amigo. Puedo, uh, necesito silencio por 30 minutos. Okay. Gracias. Yo puedo limpiar más tarde. Let's get on to the subject of exactly what you have done with the boat. I want to know, um, did you did you replace, obviously you probably replaced that bulkhead. Did you use thicker wood? What was the thinking behind it? Did you talk to a naval engineer? Did you, like, wh what do you do in that situation? Like, basically you have to rebuild one huge section of the boat. Yeah. And yes, the tabbing now needs to be fiberglass, obviously. The, the you know, this piece needs to be repaired, obviously. The cracks need to be re coated but like the structural part, that's all. That's a bit scary to do. Hundred percent. And I knew that was that was beyond me. I, I, I'm a uh, qualified mechanical engineer. From I went to university, got a bachelor of mechanical engineering, but I never really practiced it. I got it, and then I went sailing on, on <laughs> super yachts and whatnot. So, as an I, engineer, though, right? As a as an as as a marine engineer. So yeah. I never really uh, practiced my mechanical engineering uh, knowledge in in an office and. and designing things and looking at loads and stuff um so i would never I, I would never say that i was qualified enough to make the call on what to do so i asked lagoon panama to put me in touch with um with the headquarters okay and i had a significant following on youtube at that time and i was about to pump out some episodes and i i said this is a lot of people are going to see this it's probably in your best interest to help me out a little bit here so yeah. i don't mess this up in front of everyone <laughs> <laughs> and uh no response hold on a sec oh, good. i think we just ran out of battery on this one i got another one sweet okay we're back we got down a camera okay so uh so, so you you talk to the guy uh, from Lagoon Panama, he sat, tell him it's in your best interest to get me in touch with Lagoon, and nothing, <laughs> like, like cricket. That's exactly how it was. Shit. It. Um, but you, you obviously picked up that I'm not the biggest fan of Lagoon Panama, and that's because he never, he never tried to make that. Oh, he never connection. tried? No. Oh, man. So, a guy called Jason from Lagoon New Zealand follows the channel, and he said, um, hey, do you want me to contact headquarters? And I said, yes, this yeah, is exactly what I want. I'm, I'm so lost right now. I want to fix this, but I want to do it properly. So he made a couple phone calls. Next minute, Thomas Gailey, the director of Lagoon, calls me on my cell phone. Cool. This is, this is Thomas. I'm, I've been watching a few of your episodes. Jason sent me a couple of things. Um, I want to help you. 
I was like, this is just Sweet. amazing. Yeah, good day for you. Um, yeah, yeah, it was a very good day. And um, he said, uh, Vincent Provost is the designer of your boat. And he's done, he's done Outremers, he's done Fontaine Bajot, he's the catamaran naval architect. And he will, uh, he's happy to help you and guide you through the repair process. I was like, wow, yes. really? It was amazing. Oh, that's amazing, yes. So I got on a, on a video call with Vincent Provost and he's like, okay, there's a serious failure here. Um, we don't know the cause of it. At that time, I was the first one. So we don't know why that we don't know why this has happened. Da, 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 but it's clearly failed, and it's a major failure. Um, you need to straighten your boat, and so there was forty millimeters of deflection between hulls and and wow. the cockpit. It, it had come down forty that's, millimeters. That's like a, a few inches, right? What's an inch? An inch is twenty five mil. Twenty five mil, yeah. So wow. it's just under uh, just under two inches. Yeah. But your catamaran is meant to be flat, and in the middle here it, we, we put a string line across uh -huh. and it was 40 millimeters from oh, from beam to beam no. so that was it's a massive you can see it um so he said yeah you gotta you gotta haul out you gotta you gotta actually they didn't actually tell me how to straighten the boat i suggested that i would do it this way and they said okay we we, we think that's gonna work <laughs> um so i put these big pylons under the bridge deck yeah backed off my shrouds as I was coming down onto the pylons and the and the um, hulls came down and the decks were now flush. Were you worried about getting hauled out? Yeah, big time. Yeah, this is all on YouTube. This is a very scary moment when they haul us out and we, the way that they haul, uh, a travel lift works, it actually brings your hulls together. Yeah. So it was, it was helping our cause because our hulls had come out like that and the bridge deck had come down. So when we got in the travel lift, we could see the gap, all the gaps closing. And we were like, this is great. This is the right direction yeah. of the hulls. Yeah, thank God. Yeah, yeah. And there's a keel to keel measurement, like the, the center line of the keels. Um, it's meant to be 5,370 5, millimeters apart. You know that. <laughs> By we heart were, now. <laughs> and we were 5,004, we were basically 120 millimeters oh, wow. too far out. Oh, and wow. and, and that's, that's a long way when you're just talking about that small distances yeah. um so we were bent to shit and we yeah. really had to like straighten it back the shrouds off even more get the thing straight and um i'm sure just getting it straight took a while yeah and getting it level too was yeah probably another exactly yeah like how do you level something when you're in a yard in panama and the, and the yard, yard isn't even level exactly yeah so we ended was... up using a, a tube full of water yeah, that's cool. We're just doing the old school you way. That. Of, that's a really good idea. Yeah, it works. And yeah. David did the same thing on his boat. It's yeah. Oh yeah, David. So we, Dave and I had a podcast last week. Yeah. Man, that guy's so interesting and cool, and uh, funny. And he Hilarious. was telling he was telling me that like you you didn't respond to him at first because he was like hey man uh, you're my hero and you have a lagoon and so I bought a lagoon and you're kind of the reason I bought the lagoon and I, now I have cracked bullheads and I want to come like see yeah. you and you're like. <laughs> <laughs> you must have been like who is this dude yeah, and yeah. then he just kept trying and trying and trying and finally got a hold of you and then you ended up like yeah yeah no problem come on down and then now your partners are not uh, not partners your uh your neighbors and he's living on your boat yeah that's yeah. such a good story man it such was a cool it was story. weird and i i, I love it. so he was saying and yeah and in, in in uh in all honesty like we get a lot of messages and emails and i was like yeah, but put that on the back burner, put that on the, but he bought the boat. But I replied to the, he's like, I'm gonna buy this boat. Like, what should I do? And then I, I got to that too late. Oh no. And I said, it's probably got broken bulkheads. Don't buy it. Um, if you buy it, ask for like 50 grand off or something. Cause it could cost you $50,000 to fix it. And uh, by the time I had replied to that email or message or whatever it was, uh, he was already like halfway here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I think he got like 35 off. He got, he was like, I got 30 grand off or something. Yeah. Was it, was it 35? Yeah. Um, so I was like, okay, that's a good, it's a good start. But it's going to cost more than 50 grand, right? I mean, how, what is, what are the costs? Well, he's, 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 he's doing exactly what we did just a few months behind us. Well, actually he doesn't have to do things twice or think about how to do them now. Exactly. Which is, which is a so way like, cheaper option. He's like, oh, I just fucking glass this, da, da, da. it took me one day. I'm like, yeah, for us, it took a week of thinking about it yeah. before we glassed it. Yeah. And because we know what to do, because Vincent like explained <laughs> it to us as well, 
Um, he's he's yeah. He's, he's in the lucky spot. He's in a. But still, I think it, it's going to cost him like like thirty or forty grand, right? I mean, for marina fees and materials and not that's not counting manors, but he's got a guy working on his boat too. Yeah. So for us, it was ten thousand because we do all our own work. It was ten thousand dollars in materials. Okay. If Plus you take my another ten grand in marina fees, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you start to take into account my hours and Jamie's hours and now Tom's hours and yeah. Ben's hours, all these people yeah. that want to come help, um, it's we're looking at fifty grand. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Easy. If you were to pay someone else to do this, like drop your boat off at a yard, come back six months later, it would be fifty, sixty grand. To do it like we did, which is how Vincent Provost told us to do it. Okay, so that's what I want to know, is exactly how, um, you don't have to take me through every step, but like, did you beef up the bulkheads, did you, did you take the tabs and like completely glass them in, did you, mm. did you do anything to the hulls? So Vincent at that time was like, okay, this, this doesn't look like it was strong enough, da 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 da, and he said, put plywood either side of it, glass it all in together with, with, with epoxy, and rebuild the beam, so there's a beam that goes full athwart ships of the boat, and that stops this motion. Yeah. And that, that had cracked, so we need to reinforce all of that. Um, we ended up putting up like a hundred, hundred meters of glass. hundred meters? Yeah, Holy so those rolls, crap. those rolls that are is insane. 50 yards, 100 yards, which is just, uh, two, just less than a hundred meters. Two entire rolls? Mm-hmm. Into what the weight, boat. What weight glass were you using? Uh, 1708. Cool. So, <laughs> there's a lot of glass that went into that boat. Um, but that was how he told us to do it, Have and you? and because we were the first one, and and it was all very um, unexpected for a lagoon. That's how they told us to do it, and then when all these other boats started popping up with the same damage, um, they seriously downgraded. <laughs> They're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you just take these metal pieces and bolt them in. That's it. Yeah, that's the like, fix. Yeah, and well, I was like, you're gonna have the best one. Are you sure? <laughs> and yeah, so that's what they are prescribing to people now. But um, mine was, it, it definitely isn't the worst that we've seen, but it was one of the worst. There's, oh. a, there's a guy, um, Andrew Neri, he's got a Lagoon 450. His bulkheads have snapped and come up beside each other like that. Oh, I think that uh, David had a picture of that on his dog. Dave's friends with him, yeah. Oh man, that's so So that's the worst one we've seen. Because when that happens, um, it just works its way through all the different... Don't you think bulkheads. that you would like hear that happen? Like, <sighs> oh, what was that? Oh no, we're fine. Nothing. Well, uh, yeah, but there's no water coming in. So when when my my shroud went slack, I I didn't hear anything. We would because we got the flybridge. We're up there. The wind's in your hair. It's all amazing. Yeah. And uh, next minute, the shroud's just doing that. So yeah. we didn't hear anything. We didn't. Um, we were none the wiser. But what my my bulkhead had done a bit of that as well. <sighs> Yeah, man. That's so nice. it's been a, it's been a, um, it's been a journey. So, uh, would you do it again? Uh, would I buy a four fifty? Yeah. Um, you, you have to take a good hard look at the situation before you you do that. Now that everything's out in the public now. Well, how about what do you regret buying? No, like I'm a like I said, I'm a I'm a massive believer in everything happening for a reason. And, yeah. Um, all of this was just part of my journey and I've, I've taken it all in my stride and, and I've learned so much. I've, I've now got a bit of a relationship with Lagoon and they're, um, you know, they're trying to work with me on, on they're asking my opinion on things and it's, it's quite, uh, it's quite interesting in that way. But, um, I love the boat, man. Honestly, yeah. the, the layout of the boat yeah. and the flybridge and, yeah. and everything about it, except for the bulkheads, yeah. I love. So when it's, when it's, you were sailing it, was it? Did you see that video I put out with the crack, the creaking? Mm. Was it like that? Did did it creak a lot? Creaks like crazy. Yeah. And so there's a Lagoon 450 group on Facebook, and you go in there, and there's just dozens of people saying, "Is this boat meant to creak so much?" And everyone just gets <coughs> on there. You know how Facebook's just a bunch of bullshit. It's yeah. just People just throwing their two cents <laughs> yeah, in without. Like everybody's an expert. It, it, everybody's like an expert. Comments, actually. Exactly. <laughs> so people just jump on there. Yeah, that's normal. This is just what the boat's meant to do. And I was one of the people reading these com comments, and I was like, okay, cool. My boat's loud as f, but I guess it's normal. 
Now I know it's not. The no. bulkheads break and they fucking, the boat starts to do this and all mm -hmm. the cabinetry and everything just starts to move. And so uh, his name's Angelo. Yeah. He's been messaging me quite a bit. Oh, really? And I just put him in touch with um, oh, the director cool. of Lagoon. Yeah, no worries. Cool. He seems like a really he's nice a good guy. Dude. Good dude. And uh, I, I put him in touch with Thomas and he's going to go to Multi Tech Marine in Florida and then going to in inspect his bulkhead. So, cool. I mean, they're, they're good people at Lagoon. It was yeah. just such a. You, you think $50,000 for a thousand Lagoon 450s? We're talking crazy money. Um. So it was, a, it was a major catastrophe that happened for the company. Yeah, what do you do in that situation? I suppose you just like stand back and put your shield up and like, okay, well, let's just let everybody, you know, settle down and then, the then we'll figure out what to do to recompense these people. Or yeah. Play. And plus, all, most of these boats are pretty old. I mean, boat manufacturers well, have no. nothing. There's 2019, 2020 boats oh, with, really? with bent or broken bulkheads. And that was that for me when I when I heard that a lady contacted me. Her name's Giselle from um, Martinique. She said, "Can you take a look at this video?" And she had a cell phone video of um, a 2019 uh, Lagoon 450, and the bulkhead was like that. And I was like, "Fuck! Yeah, this that's is right. not this is not a hurricane thing. This is not a it's a it's a problem in it's either man manufacturing problem. or the design." And um, yeah. yeah. And I, I will never, I will never pretend or cover that up or, or try, yeah. you know. I'll just, I'll just say exactly how it is, and mm. and it's, it's a design issue. Very good. Yeah. And and this so boat. what's okay? So you, you now you're here. So let's fast forward to this point. You've been here for a year. You're almost ready to go, right? I mean, like another month or something, right? No, another few weeks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's even better. Yeah. And. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I'm excited for you, dude, because like I can just imagine how frustrating this has been this whole process, and now you're finally almost done with it. And you got this, you put on uh, extended transoms, and you did some custom work to the boat at the same time. Um, you're you're, re you're ready to go back and, and get back in, in the paradise. You're right next to San Blas. If you guys don't know Isla San Blas, it's a beautiful place. It's one of the, there's a lot of circumnavigators that say that San Blas is their favorite place. Yeah, yeah, a lot. Uh, uh, You've and been hanging out there with, with Plucky in that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'll be there with him. So. Yeah, he wants to catch up. Um, so, what is on the agenda for Parlay in the near future? What, what are you going to do after you get in the water? Yeah, so we'll splash in a few weeks, um, do the sand blast again, go to Bacchus, have a surf there, and then we'll go through the um, through the canal for the third time, <laughs> and then um, and then we'll we'll have a serious reassessment of the world situation and if it's sounding fun to go across the Pacific at that time we will if it's not because everything's locked down including New Zealand and Australia and all of these places that we want to go to we might go up to um, Mexico and just uh, hang out in the Sea of Cortez or something like that yeah that's a good idea but um, yeah we're, we're gonna we, we, we really are just taking it week by week we did that trip. I'm not all the way up to the Sea of Cortez, yeah, but you see it. Uh, like about halfway. And oh man, it was such a good trip. Yeah, if if you do go up there, go to um, Isla del Coco. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. yeah, yeah. yeah. On, the, on the way there and on the way back, man. It's just that cool of an island. Yeah. Have you done Galapagos? No, we we refit the boat in Ecuador, and right. it was it was so expensive. I think I spent like nine thousand dollars. Ecuador's expensive. Uh, no, no, no. Every, Ecuador is really cheap, but just all the work I needed on the boat, ah, right. I, I needed to like import all this crap. I ended up bringing my water maker down in my check bag. Oh shit! Yeah, it was that kind of like refit. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I, couldn't get, I I also brought an outboard motor in like 300 pieces in my check luggage. What? Yeah, I took it apart, like every single piece that I could take apart and put it in three different bags. Yeah. And nobody said anything. Yeah. And then I just put it back together when I, when it got there. And nice. I've never heard of anybody doing that actually because yeah. they won't let you take a, a motor on board the airplane. Nah. And then you'll have to pay duty on it when you when you yeah. get there normally. No, no, this is just all boat parts. There's, yeah. there's a boat in transit there too. Ah, nice. But, uh, man, yeah, Ecuador is awesome too. Go to Ecuador. And actually, the best way to get to Ecuador is go to Isla Coco. So what I would do if I was you is, if you're going to go up to Sea Cortez, pass through Costa Rica, go to go to Isla del Coco, come back to Costa Rica, keep going up, and then on the way back down, go down there, or even on the way back down, go to like the really outlying um, Mexican islands. The um, what are they called? 
Socorro. Um, oh man, the names are escaping me now. It's been yeah. a long time. But there's some really cool, never visited islands, rip up like four or five hundred miles off the coast of really? Mexico too. Yeah. Huh. Um, I had no idea. Yeah, there's some really cool ones. I, Clarion. You ever heard of Clarion? No. Yeah, go look it up, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, sure. they're one of those places that nobody goes to because it's really unhospitable. But, I mean, if you're crazy like us, you totally can go. And then you could you could do, like, those islands and then Isla del Coco and then um, Ecuador. Yeah. In one tack. Yeah. Sick. It would, it would be a real nice sail that way. Yeah, I mean, there's so many options. Yeah. It's exciting. I just... <laughs> We just want to get back in the water. Yeah, yeah. It's just been, it's been so long. I've been in the marina for two weeks and I, I'm like itching to get back in the water and I can't really, you can't really swim in the marina. The marina's gross. Mm. People poop in here. Mm. And people like throw oil at me. Yeah, it's just not clean. Yeah, it's not. Um, so, cool man. Well, thanks for the time, dude. It was a really cool story. I'm, I'm yeah, so no happy way. for you. I'm, I'm amazed that you've done this whole journey and hadn't broken yet. I mean, how many times did you want to quit? Never, never. Yeah? You, you, you're the same. You never want to quit. No. Man. You want to I mean, I kind of want to sometimes. There's been days where I've been like, I'm going to blow some holes in the bottom of this thing. <laughs> but I'm not kidding. But, but <laughs> no way. Yeah. But, you know, you, you carry on and do what needs to be done. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, for sure. I just think it's fun, man. I think it's all part of this journey that you're meant to be going on in life, yeah. man. And it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's ups and downs. Hopefully oh, all our ups are coming. Uh, well, uh, we did, one thing we didn't talk about was your time on TV. You were on TV a little bit, right? On yeah. The... So after the, I got struck by lightning, bulkheads broken, COVID had happened, and my dog died. Oh, oh, sorry, my dog died while I was on the show. Um, so Below Deck approached me, which is a silly reality TV show. And they said, we want to we want to throw you on as the chief engineer. Right. And I said, well, I've got a girlfriend. I'm, I'm not willing to uh, hook up with anyone. Yeah. All of that stuff. That's what that show's about, is like how the interpersonal relationships it's, work. It's, it's, yeah. It's a reality TV show. It's, it's, it's kind of, kind of fun to watch, to be honest. Okay, <laughs> that's fun. Cool. It's, it, it's trashy, but it's, yeah. And they approached you? Yeah. Yeah. And they saw you on YouTube? Yeah, okay. so it was through it was through Facebook. Uh, one of the casting casting guys messaged me on Facebook, and I thought it was a joke. <coughs> but they saw that I was a, a cheap engineer on sup on Supiots and was okay in front of a camera, and they were like, "You'd be perfect." And I was like, "Well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be part of the debauchery that I know is is part of that show." And they were like, "We still want you." So they they gave me a price, and I was like, "No, nah, I'm working on my boat." I'm fixing my bulkheads. I'm gonna go sailing. Everything's working out. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna leave uh, the situation for that amount of money. And they just went up and up and up and up. And it got to a point where it was like, That's okay, a lot. I can okay. really use that money. Yeah. That's gonna go straight back into the boat. Um, you know, cause how long was it? Hard. How long was the was the gig? It's. Yeah, they say six weeks of filming, but there's like a week of quarantine before that, and then there's a week of like got it breaking down after so that. So like two months. Two months. Yeah. yeah. But the but it was good money and that money just went straight back into parlay and I, I had no longer that um, that stress about money to finish the job. Yeah. I knew that the it's money good to I get had, a good like chunk influx every once in a while. Exactly, and then, man. Oh, and man. I, it was just a huge relief. I mean, you guys might hate me for it, but every once in a while I take a sponsorship and you know if I get five or ten grand from one of those, man, it helps me so much. I can get. Like all these things I want to do with the boat, they're just, okay, let's buy it all now. And then I have two months of working. Yeah. And it's so nice. To, For sure. I'm sorry, guys, that you have to watch that bullshit. I don't even like making it, but. <laughs> I've, I've never done, I'm going to do one soon. You should. Just, um, I, I mean, I don't let that solar, as long, you know that what, solar frame cost you five grand. Yeah, that was that was that Jackery ad right there. Yeah. But uh, the thing that I do is there, I get contacted a lot for these things. Like I got contacted today. Um, it's like probably two a week. And I tell everybody no. Like, nope, don't want to do it. And then if it's something that I believe in, like a solo generator or uh, I did one for Skillshare or Audible. Or, I mean, I use Audible. I, I like these things. If there's something that I use and I can back and I can actually like sleep with myself, sleep with myself, look at myself in the mirror. 
<laughs> Shut up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not even gonna go there. Yeah, I, I'll do it. Yeah. So yeah. if it's something you believe in, well, that would that would be my recommendation. Don't you know sell yourself out. I mean, I I don't think you're the type of person to do that. No, I haven't done one yet, and I get I get the same emails, but it's gonna get to a point where it's just like. Yeah. You know, that money could really help. Like, insurance costs money. And yeah. Dockage. Yeah, 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 and then, yeah. you know, the You guys boat. have no idea, I mean, unless you have your own boat, how much it costs to, to have this kind of lifestyle. It's insane. I should quit it, this, and then get an RV. I could make the same amount of money and have a tenth of the expenses. Mm. Like, this is just a stupid way to... Yeah. To throw away your money. Yeah. But I tell you, it's one of the most fun. It's amazing. I wouldn't change anything. Yeah. It's but like life. being in Panama as well, like I got these um, lithium batteries coming down and, and I've ordered a bunch of parts and, and it's yeah. it's a two thousand dollar shipping bill. Wow. For to get that from Miami to here. That's amazing. It's well, it's a lot of money. Yeah. It's, it's a good deal, yeah. But you're gonna, it's a lot you're of gonna money. love your lithium. I'm sponsored by Dakota Lithium. You guys, if you want lithium, um, awesome company, cool to work with. You're and a paid promotion right yes, now. Yes, I am. <laughs> They're the badass. And you, you got sponsored by Battleborn, right? Yeah. Battleborn, also awesome company. Sponsors a lot of people. Uh, uh, it, this is my point. Lithium batteries, I think, are the number one uh, addition that I have put on this boat. I mean, mm. I've dealt with the old six volt batteries with my old boat and with the one before that, with the one before that, and I hate batteries. I hate batteries. It's just always a, a constant issue. Power is a constant, yeah, draining issue on a on a. a it boat. it affects your um, your way of life. It affects your crew morale. Yeah, having to say, hey, 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 stop, hey man, turn that fan on. <laughs> yeah. it's running for too long. Yeah, I've literally told people to, like unplug their computer. Like, sorry, man, you can't yeah. watch movies. I don't have the power. Yeah, yeah, it sucks. But now, power and water. If you get those two sorted, then yeah, you know, it's a pretty sweet life. Yeah. Uh, I tell everybody that on the boat when they come on. I'm like, look, there's a few rules on the boat. One is don't fall off the boat. The two is don't use too much water. Yeah, three. So don't use too much power. If you if you're leaving the the bedroom and your fans are on and your lights on, I'm gonna yell at you. It's just you have to. Come on, yeah. man. It's it's not for free. You're not living with your mama anymore. We had so we we cruised like fixing the boat as well, but it was, it was three and a half years or three years of cruising, and no water maker. Um, mm -hmm. These shitty dual purpose lead acid batteries. Like yeah. I was so. They had not enough money to even buy like deep cycle ones mm -hmm. so i had to be the dick about yeah, power and sucks. the dick about water and and yeah. well, those, are two, <laughs> those are the wait, two things wait till you meet pluck it he, he tells me that he's like he's timing the girls in his shower he's like hey hey it's 15 seconds you gotta shut down and, and yeah. he'll just shut the pump yeah. off <laughs> yeah he's probably got like a 50 liter water tank yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like 100 amps of yeah yeah <laughs> He's a funny dude. You love him. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah. Anything else? Anything else we need to? Any any imp last imparting of wisdom onto the crowd that's watching? Nah. Let, let's. Or listening. Or listening in. Um. Yeah. I think. I think. Our story is one that is that has the potential to be inspirational for people because we got hit with so many blows at, at, at a single time and to come out of all of this was a lot of work and uh, myself and Jamie who was my old first mate um, we kept laughing and we kept smiling and we kept just just trucking on and, yeah. and you either give up or you get through it those are your only two options and we chose the option of, of getting parlay back in the water there, there was never a moment where we were like this is this is too much this is too hard. We were we were focused, dedicated, and in two or three weeks we'll be going in the water and and um, sailing again. Bro. So it's a For real. It's for been real. a fucking journey, yeah. but I mean, it just that's, makes I'm the so excited forward. for you. Like in my heart, I'm like, yeah, man, that's yeah. gotta be such a good feeling. You're gonna you're gonna be so stoked to see that boat floating again. Yeah, I'm gonna be crying. I'm gonna yeah. be emotional. I'm yeah. gonna be like. Yeah. yeah, and that's the that's the beauty of what we do as well is we're going to show that, yeah. and and that's also um, can be inspirational for people to see what goes into these boats and mm -hmm. how much work it really is, and and like every project is just a, a money pit that you just throw your cash into. 
Um, but the rewards yeah. are... But I think the common Good denominator thing. of being able to reap those rewards are hard work and not quitting. If you can just not quit, because that's what the problem is. They say for every thousand people that had this dream, only one person goes. It's because they quit. It's because they quit. Yeah. And, and maybe they get like 20, 30 miles and they just don't want to do anymore. Or they don't like the, the motion or something like that. But mm. they quit too early and mm. then they don't get to reap the, the yeah. really good highs. For sure. They have so many lows because when you buy a boat, you know, it, it, it doesn't go up. It goes down. You, you, you are like on an emotional ro roller coaster straight into hell. Mm. And as soon as you get through hell, it's going to go way back up. Yeah. But that's the way it goes, and some people can't handle it. Or, or just don't choose to, to be persistent about yeah. it. Yeah. But at, at the same time, it, this lifestyle isn't for everyone. Mm -mm. You're living with, uh, you know, at least, well, unless you're plucky, like multiple people in a, in a in close quarters yeah. in a rolly environment yeah. um it's just getting to land is a, a dinghy right away yeah. you know it's 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 just you usually can't just there's walk something out the wrong with your door. boat there's almost always there's something broken yeah and there's water dripping on you in the middle of the night or yeah. there's yeah it's, so it's, it's like camping but with a really expensive tent 100 <laughs> <laughs> percent, and it's definitely not for everyone I've, I've had a uh, crew come on that have realized, you know, this is, they like their luxuries in life. Yeah. And we don't have those luxuries. We don't have a big screen TV with, with satellite, what a you went You TV went right for the really luxury things. I was thinking like hot water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you know. a, a normal fridge. <laughs> yeah. yeah, or a fridge that could, yeah. you know, hold more than four beers. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's fun. definitely not for everyone, but um, you and, and I have chosen this lifestyle and we embrace it and, and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else so yeah. keeps us going yep yep don't quit don't exactly. quit exactly all right man that was fun thanks for joining me thanks for I really me. appreciate it I, I love get, getting the story like and, yeah wow that would that would have killed a lot of people a lot yeah. of people's dreams would have been destroyed with that I'm not I'm not gonna lie so good it was, job it was tough good job inspiring people to, to see it through Thanks, bro. Man, it would have been hard, though, if you had, like, a full-time job. Imagine having a full-time job and having to do what you do. It's impossible. Yeah. You can't do it. This this has been a full-time job. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Congrats. It's, Kudos. It's, it's, we're, doing, we're doing six days a week, doing eight-hour days, plus I'm editing every evening yeah. and, and trying to pump out an episode every week. It's... Yeah. It's... it's uh, you gotta... You gotta, have, you gotta see that finish line yeah. speaking of that in. tomorrow's my day for that so I, I gotta I, we actually have to go because I have to edit <laughs> you're a Saturday guy yeah I'm a Sunday guy yeah mm -hmm. wow okay you gotta go bro <laughs> <laughs> cheers man it's been fun yeah you too nice to meet you man